a lot more TRT treatment nowadays than there ever has been before. Um, you know, it didn't used to exist 20, 30, 40 years ago for people's uh, parents. Why is it why is it sprouting up now and coming on the scene? And is it due to needs or is it just due to availability? What do you what do you think the cause is? I think um, uh, testosterone replacement therapy is becoming more mainstream primarily because we know more about it. Um, we finally started kind of focusing research on um, essentially male menopause and, and what what um, the causes for it may may be. Um, it's becoming a, um, a very prevalent problem in uh, most industrial societies um, enough to the point that um, uh, it's it's almost an epidemic. Um, I'm sure you've probably heard how uh, many developed countries, Japan being the most notable one, but even the United States, uh, fertility rates have dropped rather drastically. Um, uh, they were thinking that that may again be more a socioeconomic decision, but it actually turns out that um, men are producing less sperm. They're um, having you know more problems with um, essentially libido or desire to, to have sex and have kids. So um, essentially the research is, has, has revealed that uh, men uh, currently, regardless of your age, you now as a man um, have about 33% less testosterone than your father did at the exact same age. So if you're 35, you are one third less of a man than your father was. <laughs> um, again, I, it's it's clear on these longitudinal studies that um, something is going on that's across all the society, across all of the population. We are being exposed to something that is lowering our testosterone. And this is not unique to any one culture or to any one you know, race or, or any region, this is up across the board. And um, so testosterone replacement therapy is becoming very prevalent, mainly because um, all of us now, you watching this video right now, have less testosterone than your father did at the exact same age, you know, and then, you know, knowing the symptoms of low testosterone, you know, the the lethargy that comes, the lack of motivation, the low libido, the erectile dysfunction, you know, um, you know, all the problems, the other health problems like obesity and whatnot that come along with low testosterone, we're, we're dying, you know, because of this, you know, epidemic of low testosterone. And so that's why so many clinics and stuff are kind of um, uh, now uh, focusing on this treatment. It's because it's very, very, very prevalent now. Um, you know, the, the reasons for it, um, that there's a lot of speculation still, but it's very clear um, uh, that some chemicals uh, specifically uh, block um, uh, androgen receptors, uh, in particular pesticides are, are one of the major ones, um, the pesticides in the foods we eat. Uh, they're known as... Um, endocrine disruptors and so they actually um you know you eat them and they get in your system and they actually will disrupt your um, production of testosterone so and the reality is uh no matter how organic you think your food is there were pesticides associated with its growth um you know that's one little trick i learned um that uh when it comes to the usda um uh Basically, something can be classified as organic so far as it, there were no pesticides or herbicides in the last three months prior to harvest, which means prior to those three months, they can use all the chemicals, all the pesticides, all the, the crap they want prior to three months prior to harvest. So I can guarantee you that even if you're eating organic natural products, there are absolutely 100% pesticides associated in that food. And so Again, it's one of the rules, the loopholes of, you know, all these laws that, you know, uh, have been created, but 
that is what classifies an organic compound is, um, you know, none of these pesticides or herbicides three months prior to harvest, but all before that it's fair game. So you are, no matter who you are, no matter if you're a vegan, no matter, you know what, you are eating these chemicals and they're in your system and they're, you're eating them daily for years and years. So obviously knowing that alone, we're, we're you know, gonna have problems with our home, hormone production, men and women both. Um, you know, uh, BPA plastics are another common um, uh, issue. Uh, BPA is, is, is actually found in a number of things. BPA plastics are um, the kind that usually help prevent things sticking to it. Um, so you, you'll actually, they actually put a lining of BPA plastic inside of tin cans. So if you eat like, you know, canned beans or broccoli, there was, they were sitting and marinating in BPA plastic. And so, you know, for years on the shelf, maybe, and you're eating BPA plastics. So you're eating, you think a healthy meal, I'm going to have a can of, you know, um, some, some green beans and I'm going to eat some, uh, you know, what's a good example. I'm going to eat some, some bread, you know, on a whatever. And then I'm, let's say, uh, I'm going to have some meat for a sandwich, right? Well, um, uh, it's almost all beef production, at least in the United States, for sure. Um, most of those cows are on a, a hormone, um, known as trenbolone. And so, uh, again, it creates massive amount of, of muscle production, which again, uh, turns into meat. So the, the, you know, the farmers love it because these, they get these massively big cows. I mean, you can literally just Google these cows. They're just monstrous. And, um, they've been on trend below their whole life. Then you eat that. And yeah, some of it cooks out, you know, when you, when you cook it, but you are eating trend and trend will then lower your natural testosterone production. So every time you have a regular sandwich from Subway, the wheat and the bread has pesticides remaining in it. Roundup being, um, uh, uh, an herbicide too. Roundup being, um, you know, the most common thing found in it, but you're eating things that are every single day you're eating things that are reducing your testosterone production you know and then other studies have shown that you know um, exhaust from you know from cars and stuff uh, also are affecting it too so every single day we're learning more and more about it and all all we know for sure is it's getting worse so um yeah i mean it's not fair for for men to go their whole lives without feeling good you know I just want to live a normal life and I want to be able to eat a sandwich. You know, I want to live a normal life and I want to feel good and have energy. You know, and I should be able to go to the supermarket and not second guess everything. So it's just part of living in an industrial, you know, uh, society, I suppose.